No, we had a little delay there. We're here. We're back. <laughs> oh, no. Looks like we're joined by Wyatt, and I don't know who that other creepy little dude is next to you. <laughs> Look at that. You want to see something really scary? <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? We're doing good. 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 If you haven't figured it out, Jamie isn't with us tonight. He decided to hop on a private jet and head to Florida. I can't blame him with the weather moving in. Right? Yeah. You know, some people have it all, don't they? Takes the easy way out. Yeah, I heard the snow's coming. <laughs> ah. And, of course, we have a strike against us now, uh, you know, on fascist book, because we showed this in a thumbnail, and we're going to get started with the Second Amendment. Look at there. We put that up. It showed for like a second. They said that was uh, something that's going to harm children and gave us a strike so we can't broadcast for a week. That expires on Friday. So once again, commie tube and fascist book, uh, you know, doing what they do. They're going to censor everybody. So I guess that's where we're at. So if you're watch, trying to watch YouTube and can hear this anywhere else, we're not there tonight. And it's showing and I can see it. Uh, it's showing a lot of people evidently watch on YouTube. But you can catch us on fascist book. You can catch us on guns of the 701.com. And we're asking everybody, if you have a, a spooky story tonight, go ahead and share it with us, because I know we got a few of them ourselves. With that, I think I'm going to have you guys, if you would, would you start us off with the Second Amendment tonight? One of you? No. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Boom. Absolutely. That was a gift. That was a gift by our founding fathers to overthrow a tyrannical government that we're not using. Uh, absolutely. In fact, I think uh, I think if our founders would, <laughs> were alive today, they'd be so disappointed. We did not exercise that right decades ago, honestly. Maybe right. even 100 years ago. Things started getting bad at the turn of the, of the century here about 100 years ago, too. So. We go, well, we're, we're, people must be finding their way over. I'm seeing the numbers jump. So, yes, hopefully, if you're listening even on the website and you want to chime in and comment, you're going to have to go to the fascist book, unfortunately. And, I, you know, since Twitter got bought out and become X, I found out why we can't broadcast live there. It always uploads. But unless you get your little blue check and verified and pay them, you don't get to go live. So, the heck with that. We're not going to do that. Hey, Gene, good to see you tonight. Guys, I want to introduce Mr. Marty Beard and Wyatt Franz, and he is the blind guy of ND. I'll tell you what, you can't get better blinds, can you, Wyatt? Nope, we got the best. Got the best, and they're oh. perfect for hunting shacks. Just as Yes, me. I've done three of them so far. <laughs> Jamie's is one of them. Perfect. I can't I'm think of a better I'm thinking about having him do my dog kennel, but I don't have any windows in there. <laughs> Well, we oh, you have to cut that. some in so you can yeah. do it. Right there it is, guy. There is Wyatt and Tammy. Tammy helped get us online tonight. 222-3932. That's right, 701-222-3932, blindguynd.com. And you can see everything they got. You can contact them, uh, make your request, and they will set you up. I know you did some work for one of our other sponsors out there, too. So. Yep, yep, Doug. Yes. Yeah, he seems to be happy. He hasn't complained yet, so... <laughs> I'm not sure Doug ever complains. Doug. I don't think he would, but I wish he'd tell me because my work is out there and I need to know. <laughs> I think he's happy with it from what I understand. Yeah. Of course, I went up there and had some fun on a, on a range day, but I don't remember the later evening too good. So, <laughs> Well, you would remember there were blackout shades that it was just in his bedroom. So he probably wouldn't oh, remember. Wasn't in his bedroom, no. Yeah, no. well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, then I see we have Dan Brown. Hey, good to see you from the Western Edge. Hope I hear you guys might get some snow over there in that Dickinson area. Trampus Brenner, he's over here just east of me. Good to see you down here tonight. Waylon Turns. That's right. There's no YouTube tonight. Uh, like we were explaining, YouTube decided that we are, I guess we're harmful to kids or a threat. So <laughs> those commie son of a bitches went ahead and just axed us for tonight. Hey, Doug, DJ Thompson. Hey, how you doing? He says, what do you think of the new speaker? Heard he's supposed to be a real cons constitutional guy. You know, I, I think he might be. I had never heard of this guy. I don't know about you guys. I, I had never heard of him. So last night I was hearing this talk that this might be the guy. Went and kind of looked him up. He's a constitutional lawyer out of, Louis out of Louisiana. His record actually emulates Ted Cruz's on his, uh, on his case files. So... If that's any indication, I think he's going to turn out to be a pretty good guy for us. Time will tell. I don't trust any of them. Um, I know when I called Armstrong's office, you know, to to encourage a vote, 
for for this guy because I thought he's probably the better one. Uh, I didn't get much answer. All that lady said in his office was, "Well, he's going to vote for the for the best guy out." I said, "No, he's not <laughs> yet." So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, Doug, I don't know what to tell you. I, I think he'll be okay. Time will tell. Uh, ba- the big thing will be with that, and that's kind of going off what we were going to talk about tonight, but we'll see how he does when he comes to the, brings the, brings the house into session and sees what he does with the budget and, and all these uh, different bills. Yeah, he might look like that, right, Marty? <laughs> yeah, a lot of them should look like that. And uh, yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them should learn. Uh, yeah, well, we won't go any farther than that, huh? And I want you don't want to get banned off any more platforms than you already are. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Hey, maybe instead of doing this, we could just meet in Wyatt's shop in the blind guy's shop once a week and discuss everything in our country. Maybe band together, get our guns ready, and uh, use that Second Amendment to take back our country. Yeah. How? What a novel idea! Just an buddy. idea. What a novel idea! Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Lynette, there. Hey, we got we we have Laura Auto there. Repair. They're talking. They're on tonight. She says they're calling Johnson an extreme mega. So, you know, maybe good. that uh, maybe good. that's a good thing. I, heck yeah, I'm I'm with it every time. I I heard some of them talking heads like uh, a certain guy that was on with Daryl today, on on a station we know of called K Fired, saying that uh, mega. Or not, that wasn't today, it was yesterday, talking about how the mega Republicans and, and the Trump people, they're kind of taking over the party. Good. That's what I want. I, I want conservatives. I want people going to be have their feet held to the fire. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, and anybody that's uh, part of that other party called the Libertarians, they always like to play like they're they're the elite and they're better than you, and they know everything even though they get nothing accomplished and elect nobody. So that's just my two cents. That's why we piss off a bunch of people at night. <laughs> We've never done that, have we, Marty? No, no, no. All right. Well, let's get started. Hey, Keith, good to have you uh, join us tonight. He says, hopefully he can censure the Jihad squad. Absolutely. Get those commies out of there. Maybe put their, well, I better not say that. Then we will get banned again. I'm, I have a comment, but I won't say that. Something about turbans and fire. But anyway. <laughs> hey, get banned after we do the scary stories. There we go. Before. So, guys, everybody that's listening tonight, if you have a spooky story, please chime in, send your comment, let us know what it is. Um, I've got a few lined up that uh, basically are happening in North Dakota, even a video clip from a show that came to the state. But I know Marty's got a few to start it off with. So do you want to start this baby off, Marty, with a spooky story? And I'm going to put a picture up, and uh, I kind of want you to explain this one. There. Okay. That I was walking to my hounds, and and I will say that this was the time of year when there were a lot of mosquitoes out swarming. This was, you know, and that's what people are going to say. Well, that's a swarm of bugs. Or um, I'm walking (laughs) up the road, um, and uh, uh, that appeared and went across the road. Now, Hmm. what I saw later in that, if you look ahead, there is a orb. I see uh, that. That 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 is not a reflector. That there, there is no reflector. And if anybody wants to go check this picture out, you can actually see this. If you go down to the uh, McLean Bottom south of Bismarck, you can find this exact spot. You'll be able to pick that tree out. There is no reflector there. And whatever went across the road in front of me, my dogs were trailing up that creek. And uh, I still have no idea what that was. And I don't either. I know when you sent that to me, I was like, wow. First thing I thought, because I didn't know the backstory, was, well, maybe you took it through your windshield and maybe it was something on the windshield. (laughs) Well, no, you said you were walking, so there's no possibility of that whatsoever. Yeah. And that's what my cousin sent me right away in Washington. He said, "Uh, why don't you clean the bird turds off your windshield? And I'm like, I'm walking. You know, that's not on my phone screen. Now, yeah. that river bottoms, though, Clay, and, and you know, my ancestors owned land down there, and uh, I've hunted down there since I was a little kid, and I hunt basically mainly at night, and, and I was raised with a bunch of old cowboys and old hunters <laughs> that love to scare people. You know, if you could pull a practical joke off or somehow scare people— some of the guys that I used to ride with, they would crawl a half a mile through cactus to scare you. 
<laughs> so that's the kind of people I've been, and I'm guilty of that myself. I mean, I've pulled some elaborate pranks off on people, but you know, there's a, there's a line you draw um, between uh, scaring people and then just strange stuff that happens. And I, I've had, you know, I've hunted in the woods at night, mainly by myself because why it won't go with and I've Jamie gone twice. And, and I haven't made anymore. it over there yet. I see I'm ahead of you. <laughs> Why it went once? No, I went twice. No, Jamie went once. Oh, Jamie went. Jamie went once. Well, yeah. Bill, my brother, went a couple times. I was with him twice. twice. Yeah. <laughs> and and they were on the mules that we yeah. were hunting on the mules. Now, that was pretty neat. That you know, having fun. the mules jump the fence and. But I was two up <laughs> on a mule with another dude, which was not the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> what do you do? It was better than walking. But... <laughs> I was at least in the back. You're in the back. <laughs> oh, we were riding double. <laughs> oh boy, oh but, boy. You know, so in 35 years of hunting at night, I've been hunting coon since 1987. I've I've had a lot of things strange things happen to me at night. Not only uh, you know, and that's what I want people to call in. Let's get some scary stories. I wanted to write a book on the paranormal of uh, North Dakota. I put out ads, give me your paranormal stories. I would love a book about this. <laughs> um, I would add mine. And if you guys have any, I would, I'm still open to writing this book. And, uh, but I just don't seem to get, I don't know if North Dakota is a newer state. Well, I don't know, but. People go to bed at night. Yeah, some do, some do. <laughs> some some do, do. don't they? <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, kind of hard to get a lot of stories when most of your uh, crew is sleeping. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm going to put this out there. I don't usually put this out there, but that's no big deal. I just put my number up there if you want to text me, 605-430-9503, or call me. I'll tell you what, if you call me, we'll try to put it up here to the mic and see if we can't get hey, that, that to come over good. the top. But I did it one other time, and it didn't work too bad. So, And we're working on being able to take calls, but we don't do a lot of that. So is it worth the investment of buying the – a little bored to do it. I don't know, but go ahead and call and we'll try to put it right up here and maybe we can even get it to come over to, over the speaker because I would love to hear some stories as well. Jason Penny, he's been chiming in here. Good to have you on. He says, let's go catch that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, it. I love it. That very same bottom. Now, here's one of the stories that I would say would be more for Bigfoot. Um, uh, and it, you know, and I have a lot of them where I pull into an old farmyard, old farmyards kind of always give me the creeps and a lot of, you know, it's, it's happened to me twice where I pulled into a farmyard and I saw a set of eyes <laughs> and they were red eyes, That's red eye shine. And, and very few animals have red eye shine. You know I mean? Coon will have yellow cats, green, you know, and you got your, but now there's two farmyards that I pulled into where I definitely saw red eye shine. Um, but this bottom's below me. Uh, there's a long history. It used to be a lot of people that lived down there. You know, now there's nobody. Now the Corps of Engineers uh, basically mm, eminent domained it, and everybody lost it. it red eye shine? Isn't that albino? Will they shine red? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I imagine. I, bet <laughs> I don't think you, you know any albinos we could try that on? Uh, I swear <laughs> we had an albino horse that had red eyes. Well, that could be. At night, mm, maybe he's just. Possessed. I didn't catch any albino raccoon in there. Well, you should have. I should have. <laughs> I should have had better dogs. <laughs> you need to train more. more <laughs> um, but so that that bottom's there, and there's there's a few things that scare me, and 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 that is that something that scares a dog or a horse. Right. So, um, I was down in that bottoms one night with a young guy. And we started, uh, we turned the dogs loose on the creek and they went up the creek and I said, well, we can drive around. We got over there and there was a, a noise. It sounded like between somebody hitting a tree with a big limb or somebody hitting rocks together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, what is that? I mean, I heard about every noise in the woods at night. And uh, well, this young kid that was with me, um, uh, he said, well, I don't know what it is, but I'm not going out there. <laughs> and he, uh, and I'll tell you about what happened to him in that same woods. But so I started going on there, you know, and I had a 
not as good a coon light as I have now. They were old mine lights. And uh, so, you know, about 70 yards was about the max. And I would, that noise would stay out of the light. And the dogs kept coming. I was ahead of the dogs now. And dogs kept coming, coming, coming. And when they got to that noise, they went berserk like they caught something. And I, I said, well, they got it. And then they went silent. Uh -huh. And I mean eerily silent. Them dogs are barking all the time. And uh, it, except I could hear the noise. Well, two of the dogs, I, I had my tracker. And back then I didn't have GPS. It was beep, beep, beep. I had a big wand out that front. That wand yeah. we had on yeah. that show. And, and two of my oldest dogs, now these dogs had caught bear, they caught mountain lions, bobcats, they, they would tear into anything. And two of these dogs went back and they were under the pickup hiding. <laughs> and I kept going to the other dogs and I was, and, and one of them was laying down on its back. That was a younger dog. He was laying down like this. And I caught him and I went on to where the other dog was. And uh, that was Holly, and I'm hollering for her, Holly, Holly. And she'd look, and then she'd look away. She'd look back, and she was looking at that noise. So I hooked her up on the leash and went back to the pickup, and whatever it was followed us back. And uh, we got to the pickup, and I loaded them. And, and the next day, I was gone shoeing horses way up north, and that just kept bothering me what that was. And I got home, and I rode my mule down there. That's like <laughs> five miles from my house. And I rode that mule down there. And when he got to that area and it, right where I was, he just started. I could just feel him tensing up pretty soon. He's just snorting and wanting to run off. So whatever, whatever was there still scared that mule the next day. Wow. I have no Hold idea. On. Wow. Well, guess what? We got a call coming in here. We're going to try this out. This is Mr. Corey Merriman. He lives south of Lemon, South Dakota, a friend of mine. And I think he's got a story, and I kind of faintly remember this in just a second. Corey, can you hear us? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. There's a little delay between my cell phone on Facebook and, and, uh, and the phone here. So you guys can hear him okay on your end? I can hear him great. All right, so... Yeah, so Corey, you, you commented uh, basically. I kind of faintly remember that coming home that night. Uh, why don't you tell us well, a little bit about I, that? I think it was. Uh, I think we were coming back from a uh, Chris Ledoux concert in Bismarck. I think you're right. If I if I'm <laughs> correct, I, I can't remember. It's been years ago. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but we were coming back, you know, and then uh, we were on Highway 12. And we were headed west, you know, and all of a sudden there's this big ass bright light behind us. So we'd speed up and slow down and that light would never falter. I mean, it stayed the same distance. Yeah. And I mean, we drove for what, 20 some miles with that light. Something like we that. We thought it was a train, but we'd slow down and speed up and they'd do the same thing. And, you know, trains don't do that. <laughs> no, it, it stayed. I remember <laughs> right. that now. Yeah, it stayed right with us. Kind of was freaking us out, especially probably been. Well, yeah. We had mean, a few, I'm sure. A, I think it was, I don't know. I can't remember if it was completely dark that night or not, but it was like really weird. And we're like, well, what the hell is going on? And, <laughs> and then. You know, we sped up, slowed down a few more times, and all of a sudden, boom, the light was gone. You know, I was like, what in the hell was that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, if I would have said that to you, not you being with me or whatever, you'd be like, oh, bullshit, you're just drinking or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, you were with me, and you said the same thing. So, I, there, there's two of us, and, and you just can't. You can't make stuff up like that. No. So well, yeah, you know, that was you know that was definitely an interesting evening. You know what Penny is telling us? He just commented. He says, "Well, that was east of Lemon, Corey." Well, <laughs> true, it was. <laughs> just a long ways east and north, right? <laughs> yeah. But all right. Well, I appreciate you calling because I, I do kind of remember that. No, I didn't really remember it until you told us about it. I thought that, yeah, that's right. I kind of forgot oh, yeah. about it. I, I'll, I'll never forget that till the day I die because that was just, that was some freaky shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for right. calling. I'll and uh, it off so I can listen to you because yep. there's such a delay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and if anybody else wants to call in, just the same number, 
That'd be 605-430-9503. Look at that. Uh, we've had, now, that's two calls we've taken in a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, down in the comics, Eric has said that uh, they uh, they were out elk hunting one time, and they thought it was – they heard some noises in the tent, and they thought it was a bear in there with them, but it, and they got the old 45s out, and it turned out to be a pack rat. <laughs> you know, and most of those scary stories are going to be like that, but there are some of them – that are just unexplainable. You know, I mean, there's no way like that light. That, that light, I have with. no clue what it was. I'm not going to say if it was something, you know, of not of this world or not, but it sure was weird. I, I kind of remember that now I, until he until he had mentioned it. I kind of forgot. I mean, we're talking years ago. This is before I was married. So, <laughs> yeah. and I, so I'll give you one then talking about, you know, Eric put up there about elk hunt. So I was out in Wyoming and I was hunting with uh, my buddy, Chris Johnson and, and another guy. So we were camped up there. Actually, we weren't in Wyoming. We were in Colorado. We were up there in that Walden, Colorado area, way up north, uh, above there, up in the big into the Rockies. We're sitting there, and all of a sudden, we could hear something out in our camp. And the same thing, we thought it was a bear. We're like, "Oh crap, what's going on?" And it kept it kept persisting and rattling around. And you know, we had this little slight tear in the wall tent. So we, you know, we're we're thinking, is it was there somebody out there? Is it and we we're a little, I mean, there's supposed to be nobody there, so we couldn't figure out what it was. Well, our buddy Johnson, he takes his 44 and puts it through that little slit, and then he took, takes a closer look and found out his horse got away, got off the lead, <laughs> and was going through camp. So, and she's a saddlebred and kind of dark, dark brown, blackish, looked kind of like a bear. So he, he darned, he had his hammer cocked, and I'll tell oh, you what, that'd have been a long day hunting without his horse the next day. Uh, yeah. out. <laughs> so, horse. so we were spooked at first, and then, of course, we figured out what it was. But when you're up there in the middle of nowhere, anybody's never went out hunting up in the mountains, there's generally nobody there. So when you hear things in your camp, it's either an animal or a horse, maybe, or you don't know what the hell it is. And it is a little bit scary because you're going to have to shoot somebody. It's just that they're going to attack. You don't know. Yeah. I know you can probably relate to that, Marty. Yeah. Well, there's one of the comments there was, I'm, it said, I'm more afraid of people than anything out there. And I'll tell you what, in all them <laughs> years of coon hunting, I've seen some weird stuff, you know, I mean, sure. You've got your usual mating rituals of people <laughs> out there in their cars that you run into yep. at night. But then you also, <laughs> <laughs> got your whack jobs out there you run into in the woods at night oh, you know yeah. and now you've got dopers you've got these meth dealers and i hunt in some areas down there south of bismarck and i'm sure a lot of people if you're from north dakota you've heard of the desert you know and i've run into full blowing meth labs down there oh i'm sure and i wrote or i rode away on my mule and then i well, that's back when a bag phone and I didn't have it on my mule. I had it back in my vehicle. <laughs> those were great, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Those, those were the good ones. But they were, you know, I mean, I, I also, you know, and you know what? I'm even more fearful. I'm more fearful of our, what our government's doing right now. I mean, there's a lot of fear out there, but that's not what we're about tonight. We're about no. strange uh, occurrences that have happened well, preferably but while hunting. I will put this out here, you know, being you mentioned that Gene Cox said he saw a 900 foot Nancy Pelosi once. Yeah, now that's scary. <laughs> that would be scary, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> that would make you. Uh, yeah, our, our buddy underwear. Our bad, our buddy Travis Roy is chiming in again. He says, "Hey, Marty." <laughs> He's been MIA. You know, I yeah. haven't. Yeah, I haven't talked he to says, Travis. We love meth dealers. <laughs> <laughs> kicked off Facebook five years ago, so six, seven. I don't know how long it's been. So I tell you, before I put up this next comment, we're coming up on the bottom of the hour, so it's probably a good time to pay some bills and thank some of our sponsors. So let's do that, and then we're going to come back. We'll get through some of these comments, and then uh, we'll continue our spooky stories. Again, if you guys have any spooky stories that you want to share with us, go ahead and you can even give me a call, 605-430-9503. And we'll put you on air. I, we, we were able to make that work. But let's go ahead and thank our sponsors tonight uh, that, that bring you this show each and every week.
At Lauer Auto Repair, they're located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota, or give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can tackle any problem your vehicle is having, and when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with the Pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There's plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area, but why take the chance of patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake, Lauer Auto is your Pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them you heard they're a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our Pro Second Amendment, Pro North Dakota, live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308, located at 309 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. Guns and the 701 is sponsored by the Blind Guy of North Dakota. For all your custom window coverings, you can contact them at 701-222-3932. They're freedom-minded, they're patriotic, and they love the Second Amendment. This husband-wife team was born and raised right here in North Dakota and based out of Bismarck. Again, for your Second Amendment company, for all your custom window coverings, the blind guy of North Dakota, 701-222-3932, or visit them on the web at blindguynd.com. All right. Again, thanks to our sponsors, Laura Auto Repair, 309 South Washington. If you need to get some great work done, I'm telling you, these are the guys that go to the Axe and the Boys, 701-258-6308. And, of course, the blind guy in North Dakota. You just saw it, guys, and why it's sitting there right there. See the sign behind him? Blindguynd.com. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Because you can fill out everything you need, and then Tammy will get back to you. So again, <laughs> thanks to all of our sponsors. So I, I had to job drop in on Jamie. I said, "Hey, aren't you tuning in tonight?" He goes, "No." He says, "I'm doing karaoke in, in Florida. I want that video." He's doing karaoke. I've never seen him <laughs> sing. <laughs> Maybe he's singing. We're not going to take it. I... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he's fully dressed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, he's probably half naked. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, been a few uh, comments coming in here. So, Gene Cox, he put one up here. He said, He's uh, he said, I've hunted above Estes Park in Colorado my, by myself. Moose make a funny noise in the middle of the night. He said, I hunted by myself and slept in a sleeping bag and a, with a 45. He's right. Them moose make some weird sounds at night when they're just hanging around and mulling out there. I don't know if you ever heard them, but they were all over the bighorns when we were out there. Yep, well, there. Marty's got a cricket, don't you? Yeah. Is that is that your phone? Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of fitting for tonight, isn't it? <laughs> well, if that thing would ring, you'd hear that. Uh, in fact, somebody should call me so you can hear my ring. <laughs> now, I I love taking kids coon hunting, but I always tell scary stories. Like I said, all of my heroes were these old cowboys that I used to ride with, and these old hunters, and and the. <laughs> They would always tell me scared. <laughs> I didn't go off right away. Hmm. You got my name spelled wrong. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's hear Marty's well, ringer because being he's I'm not trying, but it quit right away. Well, he must have turned it. Did you turn your? There it is. All right, I had to I had to ring you just so we could hear it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. So, you know, All I right. pulled off some elaborate scares on, and I rented a gorilla costume one time. Uh, cost me $50, <laughs> by the way. I got all that. I'm just picturing that. Yeah. So I had a whole bunch of young kids going with me coon hunting. They were my nephew's friends. And, you know, and my nephews didn't know about this. But my girls, my two daughters, Sage and Marty Joe, were in on it. So I couldn't figure out how I was going to get it, but I talked my brother, Monty, into wearing the gorilla costume. So I had to do a little bit of, uh, oh, you know, prefab or whatever, and I cut some reflective tape out, the red, and I put that <laughs> below the eyes. So when you looked at it, those red eyes were reflecting. Oh, my goodness. And, that uh, great. you know, not to make slight of the stories of the real things that happen, but I just like, you know, I like to be scared and I, I like to scare people. <laughs> so you're a big like foot. Fact, you're, you're a, you're a big joke. foot. Yeah. So my brother, he, I talk him into, and he's like, yeah, let's scare him. And then he realizes it's deer season. So it's <laughs> November, whatever, 12th or something, you know, two days into it, Saturday of 
So maybe maybe Saturday or Sunday when we're going to go on this big hunt and trick everybody. We had, I think, four extra kids. So we'd had four, five, six, seven, eight kids and my wife in the pickup. So we're packed in. <laughs> and uh, Monty goes, well, what if a hunter sees me before you? And shoots me, and I'm like, that won't happen. <laughs> yeah, worth, take worth, worth the, the risk, Monty. <laughs> this will be funny. So, <laughs> so we get down, and I said, I'm going to text you. This was in the era of text because you know the bag phone was a thing of the past. Right, right. So I text him when we drop down, so he doesn't actually go before some guy that would shoot him. You know, you know, anyway, well, so not we a big enough scope to recognize a gorilla <laughs> over here. I, I think I'd shoot one. I, I don't know. <laughs> gorilla of North Dakota. No, I mean, a gorilla or a Bigfoot. I would shoot. I mean, that's well, a big debate. Would you or wouldn't you? You I know, would. I look at I look at it like this. Uh, Bigfoots nor gorillas are part of North Dakota game and fishes regulations and rules. So they they should be open game, right? For yeah. open well, I'm sure we can find somehow. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Until you do it, yeah. Until you but do so, it, yeah. So we come off the bottoms, and I text Monty. So and we got the perfect spot where he's going to be into some trees. And he's going to go down there. So we got all these kids, and I kind of filled them in on some scary stories, you know. <laughs> so they're all ready. Oh, what are we going to do? What's going to happen tonight? And and uh, we come down, and Monty does it just perfect. He's doing the Bigfoot strut. <laughs> and he gets up on the road and he looks right at the pickup and the eye shine is perfect <laughs> and it's quiet. And then all of a sudden, one of those young boys says, it's Sasquatch. <laughs> and, uh, and Monty goes over the edge. So I punched that old. I had a 2002. Um, no, that was the Chevy. I had a 2002 Chevy and that baby had some power and that I rolled up there. And I got out with my 45 and Monty had gone on the ditch and I, I started firing that 45 over Monty's head <laughs> into the creek, you know, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And, and in the meantime, then I took off running down to where he was and he came around behind and uh, got up to the window and everybody was watching me and Bigfoot was standing behind him. Now, I said there were four, see, four extra boys and then my nephews, and it sounded like there were six girls <laughs> screaming <laughs> in that pickup when they turned around and saw Monty in that, in that uh, Bigfoot or in that gorilla costume. But, uh, yeah, and then Monty lost the mask, and I had to pay $50. They didn't give me my <laughs> deposit back. But, you know, it's that time of year where you like to be a little bit scared, you know, and I, like I said, I hunt five, six nights a week by myself in the woods and I've been, I've been nervous quite a bit, um, you know, because I've seen and heard some stuff where I just couldn't place it, um, you know, and I don't know if you have any of them photos. I, I, uh, I do. And, yep. Here, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw, throw some of them up here. Now there's one right there. Now, if you do much Bigfoot research, some of these structures that I found now, these are in these are in the middle of nowhere. That's not like a camping spot where you'd have kids doing this. Right. These are all actually on private land hmm. um, that I have access to hunt that. So are these uh, all like, separate ones or are these multi, are these the same? The no, same these structure. are all in different also, places, oh, okay. miles okay. and miles apart. These are anywhere from north of Bismarck um let's see i'm trying to think uh that one yeah that one is uh north of bismarck on private land i think one of them was on public land but we're talking miles from any road you know hmm. and and this is i found a lot of these when i was looking for morel mushrooms in the spring so that would explain the short grass and well, this you know, oh. Most For the guys that are going to be listening in on the podcast, I'm going to explain what we're looking at here. There's, it's usually a downed tree, limb, whatever it might be, with other sticks and limbs that are put up against it that would look like a shelter, like someone would be sleeping under it or, or some, yeah. you know, shelter you from, the, from the weather. Bigfoot or Sasquatch shelters, you're going to find a lot of this. Now, is every one of them, could they have been made by somebody? Sure. 
But this is a real common occurrence also in the middle of the woods. And, and I'm talking the big, you know, the big woods in Montana and Idaho. Oh, yeah. They find these things miles and miles. And like I said, I was a long ways in. Um, and did you, did I send you the one where there was that weird bedded? Yep. Yeah. Here it is right there. Okay. Now this was during the flooded river and you can see how high see that back river there. was yep. back. Now this was a big island and, and sure, there's a lot of ways you could explain this away. Um, there, this, this was during the flood of 2011 and I was uh, <laughs> looking for spots to coon hunt on with my boat. And, and we came across this weird bed. Now, you know, everybody's seen deer beds or, you right. know, even where you, you're out hunting cattle or something, and you see where a bunch of cattle been bedded. Now, this was in the middle of the woods, and that that place was big. And, you know, around that tree, I, I just could never explain it. I've never seen anything, uh, you know, any kind of wildlife that was bedded like that. Well, it's, it's a pretty, when you look at it, it's a pretty large bedding. And maybe it's two Sasquatches rolling around there. Uh, I could, that could be a little bit of... <laughs> You know, Sasquatch love. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> nice ad. Nice ad. <laughs> hey, I got to put this one up. Gene, uh, Gene Cox, HIV. Has anyone noticed that we can get a satellite picture of your cows? Backup cameras are crystal clear, but every picture of Bigfoot is blurry. Yeah. <laughs> Good I agree. point. <laughs> you know, in my stories that I'm going to tell about this, I think, well, why can't we get a, a, as many, uh, uh, cameras are out there. Not I was drunk answer. that night. I was, I was <laughs> up the the <laughs> that would explain it, yeah. except there were no beer cans. Ah, oh, you didn't want to live. Oh, yeah, you, you didn't want to live. Bag. Take it in, pack it in, pack it but out. I, I agree. You know, he should have showed oh, up. Good on tree a, hugger yeah. Yeah. I well, big, big up foot on, can read. Yeah, <laughs> and, and here's the deal I've showed up so many, I've been out coon hunting at night. And all of a sudden, my phone will go off with a text, and somebody will send me a picture of the, of me running by their game camera two minutes afterwards. <laughs> and and they and they and inevitably they'll say, "I think Sasquatch just ran by my game camera," <laughs> but no, it was me. <laughs> so you know why haven't we seen these? I don't know. Are they are they some sort of supernatural? I'm not selling a book on Bigfoot, so I don't have anything to do but look stupid by telling these stories. I don't have anything to gain. I'm not going right. to make any money off of it. Wow, but this guy's got an idea. Yeah, Dave, you see what Dave said? Yeah, magnetic distortion. It says, yeah, Dave, there's 1760 sports. Is maybe Bigfoot is an alien and emits magnetic distortion. Good. You yeah. know what? Who knows? Uh, no, all the aliens are in Congress. <laughs> Look at Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all and, that. That's and the common. illegal aliens, they're just coming across the border. No, from no they're <laughs> illegal. They're aliens, straight up. Boy, is your show taking it down. <laughs> yeah, it should be, uh, what, what is that other uh, show? Uh, uh, I've heard it on K-Fire late at night. But <laughs> yeah. It says, uh, uh, Eric Newman says, my other spooky story is this last weekend, I saw 17 Iowa vehicles all out <laughs> pheasant hunting. And they were all within a matter of a, one stretch of a highway all in 20 miles. Now you get that many Iowegians out there. The state's <laughs> one area. That's scary to me. He's right. He's right. Guys, I'm struggling with this. I, I thought I'd be cool and use this spooky design they got. It's kind of hard to read on my hand. I don't know about you guys. It's not too bad. Yeah. I guess I just need plain English, right? <laughs> kind of like <laughs> them guys that call at noon wanting to sell you Medicare and Medicaid and all kinds of insurance policies, and then you get mad and Tell them they're from India, and then they get mad. <laughs> How do you know where I'm from? <laughs> but you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I told you before, Clay, whatever scares an animal or puts an animal on edge, like that mule. And another one, I was tree. I was. Well, I had a coon treed. What's that? Well, I was going to say, I, I and, and you can go ahead with that. But bef after that, you've got to tell them about what you, unless you don't want to, about what you had in your safe. And, and your dogs kept looking at that safe, unless you don't want that out there. Safe? Yeah, didn't you have a kind of a skull in, in your safe at one time? Oh, that yeah, that uh, yeah, that was pretty spooky. Now that <laughs> an old guy gave me, uh, he they were do, redoing the road up there. Um, 
uh, north of Bismarck, and an old guy, uh, uh, I got a skull, human skull. Uh-oh, we lost Marty and Wyatt, and just as he, we were probably axed, probably, huh? So, tell you what, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll see if we can't get them back online before that, and we'll continue with that story. Otherwise, i got some of my own. So we'll go ahead and take a break. Thank our sponsors again. See if we can't get them back on. Stop in at Lauer Auto Repair. They're located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota, or give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can tackle any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with the Pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There's plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area, but why take the chance of patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake, Lauer Auto is your Pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them you heard they're a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our Pro Second Amendment, Pro North Dakota, live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308, located at 309 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. Guns and the 701 is sponsored by the Blind Guy of North Dakota. For all your custom window coverings, you can contact them at 701-222-3932. They're freedom-minded, they're patriotic, and they love the Second Amendment. This husband-wife team was born and raised right here in North Dakota and based out of Bismarck. Again, for your Second Amendment company, for all your custom window coverings, the blind guy of North Dakota, 701-222-3932, or visit them on the web at blindguynd.com. All right, guys, we're back. So uh, I just talked to Marty. They lost power there or something, so they're going to try to see if they can get back online. But that was a pretty cool thing that uh, Marty was talking about. Had this skull that he was given, and it was from some kind of site. He put it in a safe, not thinking nothing of it. And his dogs, they'd go over there and they'd just stare at that. Then that kind of goes back on the whole thing about animals and, and how they react. I'm with Marty on that. When I was riding horse or even the dogs or anything, cattle, when you're out working cattle and you see something out there that they're shying again, you know, shying away from and there's no reason, you always got to wonder what is it they see that we don't. I know our dogs right here in our own place, we've had a lot of things in the 25 years we moved into this house. I don't know what it's from. You know, we do have some Indian rings that are up on top of two buttes uh, across from each other that are separated by a pretty good uh, pretty good distance and a little creek that runs through. It makes you kind of wonder if them tribes maybe were warring tribes. Maybe they were looking for things. Maybe things happened. I have no clue. But we see a lot of things there. One of the big things we noticed when we first moved in when Danelle and I got married was, uh, well, her stereo. It did run on batteries, but it had none in it. It would come on in the middle of the night, come on and thought maybe had the timer put on it, didn't. Unplugged it, and it still came back on. I don't know. You know, you can take that how you want, but uh, I witnessed it myself, and that always kind of freaked me out. It's like, how in the heck does that happen? Um, You know, it's, it's not plugged in. There's no power to it, but yet it still comes on. Our electronics in this house, it hasn't been bad now here for a while, but at first, when we first started moving in and doing changes to this house, I'm telling you, our our phones wouldn't last. They'd all of a sudden get drained of their batteries. I'm talking our, our home phone, our cordless phones, or our remotes would lose all their battery power. I mean, we are we couldn't keep batteries and things. Light bulbs couldn't keep a light bulb in this place. And constantly was, and it wasn't the wiring. I actually replaced a lot of the light fixtures thinking that's what it was, but it still continued. So, you know, that's my, some of my spooky stories. So I don't know um, what happens, but sometimes you just have an issue and you just kind of ignore it and move on. I know when the boys were born, we had one of them little baby monitors in Landon's room. And every once in a while you'd hear like somebody running their fingernails across that speaker. And uh, one night Danelle just finally was like, enough. And that ended. And, you know, and he'd wake up in the middle of the night. So I don't know. I mean, take it how, how you want. I don't know if it's, if it's real, if it's not real. But I can tell you that the things we witnessed were real. And uh, a little bit spooky when you live in a house. It might have a little few extra things going on. By the way, Wyatt and them guys are trying to get logged back in here. I just saw a glimpse of them. They're working on it. Uh, so she's working on getting them back on the air, and we'll bring them forth. So anybody else have any spooky stories? 
don't hesitate to share them with us. Again, you can call me, 605-430-9503 with some of them. I know a lot of you guys have them out there. And I'd love to share them with our with our uh, our viewers tonight. And you guys are doing good. A lot of people switched over to Facebook, which is good, uh, especially since YouTube has nixed us. Now, I will tell you, we will get that on there. Um, what I'll do is I'll download the episode, and then as soon as we're able to post, I will put this episode on there. You just won't see it under the live. You'll probably have to look under the, the playlist itself. <laughs> Gene Cox is ghost got your guess. Yeah. That's now what if they disappear for a month? Then we'll be like, ooh, oh, what happened, right? <laughs> so it's uh, kind of interesting that we lost them in the middle of what was gonna be a pretty cool story. Um I don't know. I've I've seen like I said, I've seen a lot of spooky things on this place. Our dogs have had several reactions. The best the best one was was um, this was one of the dogs that's passed on, but I'm telling you, he was sitting, he got up, he went over to the door and he just stared at the door. So we look outside, nothing there. We, we were going to let him out. Didn't want out. He just consistently stared at it and he'd even growl a little and curl his lip. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to take of that or what to think of that here. Just a second. I'm going to see if I can get these guys on. So, Hey, do, do we have you? I got you, Tammy. Oh God. <laughs> uh oh. Just do this. <laughs> oh my goodness! There we go. Uh, now we're but anyway, business. kind of fizz, uh, finishing up what I was bit. talking about. I was the talking about how our dog. Out. What's that? The power went out. The government huh. shut us down. <laughs> right in the middle. Right in you the middle what? of you. They can't handle the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Corey Merriman says, "What? Tomac show up?" Uh, I, could be. I don't know. Uh, you know. Hard telling. By the way, you guys don't know him, but my buddy Greg told me. Maybe you met him, Marty, at some of the banquets I had him with me. He was the cowboy looking dude. Looked like he oh, walked out of Quigley down under. Did you He say, had the big tall boots up to his He did. Yep, boots. that was oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomac? I think, I think he was well known. He reminded me of Festus Hagen. <laughs> you know, I think he was more well known than me at the banquets. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... A good Halloween story. It ain't really spooky. We went down to Vermilion to do an event, and that was always a, around that Halloween era time. And all these college kids, remember, Vermilion has USD, so they always had these Halloween parties going on, and our banquet was always on a Friday night. So we go downtown walking and just checking things out, you know, not too far from the facility. Greg actually won a contest for the best costume at one of these bars he was at. Was what he wears. He was wearing his, what he does, shaps, boots, hat. I mean, he, he looked, he's the most authentic looking guy I've ever seen. So the best part was he disappeared on us. He was kind of talking to this nice young thing. And he said, we said, hey, we got to get back because we're driving back tomorrow. We're tired. You know, the other guys that were with he goes, oh, I'll make it up to the motel. Mind you, this is on the other side of Vermilion. This is a ways. It's not like uh, you know, you're walking a couple blocks. He didn't show up till it probably was four or five in the morning. And when I when we finally got up that other that next morning, he had scratch marks on his back like you can't imagine. We figured that pretty little gal hooked in him. <laughs> she liked his costume oh. too. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> hey, do you have her number? <laughs> <laughs> well the best thing is we went to eat that morning and people are like hey that's the cowboy they recognized him and it was these college kids that were probably still mm -hmm. out doing the same thing getting some breakfast in the morning he was the most well-known guy in a short period of time kind of reminded me of groundhog day when bill murray's character is recognized all over town for things that's kind of what this was like that was during halloween but he got the best costume ever at the one bar i thought that was and he was just dressed like he always was <laughs> Well, I got to put this disclaimer out there right away. You know, and, and uh, there were many, many times that I was scared out of my wits. I mean, I, I the worst thing you can do when you're coon hunting is to take off running towards your pickup because <laughs> your fear does not get less. <laughs> as you get closer to your pickup because everybody knows that the guy's going to jump out and get you at your pickup <laughs> so you know running does you no good does you no good <laughs> I, I can honestly say when i became uh you know a believer in jesus and my faith was really strengthened i wander through that woods by myself night after night after night and i'm no longer afraid of things that could harm me in the woods you know because i think a lot of this stuff is the devil playing
tricks on us and playing with their mind, adding fear to everything like he does in our everyday life. But, you know, uh, back to some scary stories that, like I said, scared animals. We were treeing some coon. We had treed a coon up north of Mandan. We were hunting on a big ranch and feedlot I hunted and, and I used to shoe horses for up there. And I, I knew that area like the back of my hand. And uh, we, we had uh, treed a coon and uh, we were walking back and, and right below us on this railroad grade. Now to set this up, the railroad grade goes down about 50 or 60 feet. And then it's another 50 or 60 feet up a big bank. And um, and we heard only thing that I can describe this of is a, a demon growl or snarl, and uh, it, we just we were walking along there just BS and me and another kid, mm -hmm. and and we heard this <laughs> right below us, and them dogs wanted to go to it, so I just unsnapped them, and they went over that bank, and that noise just. It sounded like a lion. It was as loud as a lion roaring like you hear in Africa, hmm. but it was different. <clears throat> so those dogs backed up the hill. They were, they were going down. They backed up, and then they stood there with the hair sticking up. And these are dogs that have fought everything from bear to mountain lion. They, the hair stood up on their back like this. And I turned to that kid and he had the gun. And I said, you got that gun loaded? Well, he was already gone. <laughs> he had taken the gun and was gone. He, he was gone. He's out of and there. Me, yeah, and I was soon to be after him. Let me tell you, we, we got back there and them dogs ran back with us. So we go, I, I was up there shoeing horses on the feedlot within four or five days. And uh, Sharon asked me, she said, you you hear any weird noises in the woods lately? She knew that I hunted those woods five, five nights a week. You know, I've trained a lot of dogs there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, uh, like what? And so she had a computer there and, and her, I think it would have been her son-in-law. He went through these noises and I, I had him punch up fox noises. Now a fox at night makes some strange screams and howls. And if, and, and if you haven't, I, I get more calls on fox noises scaring people than anything. They're like, what noise is this? And I'm like, that's a fox. Um, so I played that. She, of course, she'd heard many, many coyotes. And then she, and, and then I got to different sounds, mountain lions make, nope, nope. And then I said to her, I said, did it sound like this? And she said, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. <laughs> And so she, it was Marty. She, it was Marty Beard. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> That's his mating call. She drove. She heard she that. She, she, she drove <laughs> the school bus. So she would go start the school bus, and they lived up above that big bottoms. And she heard that two mornings in a row when she went out mm. to start the school bus. Wow. No mm. idea what that was. Uh, you know, and like I said, what whatever scares an animal, and and back to that skull story. So I had this human skull. You know, that's a little oh, bit that's the weird. Power cut out. That's yeah. that's about weird. That's when the power <laughs> cut out, even stranger. That's exactly when the power went out. Yeah. So I had this human skull, okay? And I, I had it in my gun cabinet. And, you know, I, I wasn't, like, showing it to just everybody because I know that you probably shouldn't have a human skull. <laughs> I said, we, I don't know if we should talk about it, but I guess it's Well, out. it is what it is, you know. I, I don't have it anymore. Yep. So... When I was in that house, that I had a dog named Toot. She was a little beagle. And uh, she would stare at a corner and growl. <laughs> and she would look down the hallway. This was an old trailer house I was living in. My, my wife and I, I mean, you know, give the best to the bride, you know. <laughs> and so she would stare down that hall and growl. And, and then we had my first daughter there. That was 27 years ago. And I would sleep in that back bedroom. Is that weird? No, that was in town. Oh. And uh, I, needless to say, I got I took the skull to a good friend of mine who lives down on the reservation. That was It was an Indian skull. Yep. Um, and uh, I gave it to him and I said, do what you got to do to, you know, <laughs> Make this keep the spirits at bay. I mean, you know. <laughs> 
but when when I gave that skull to him and he gave it to the elders and whatever happened happened, that dog never did that again. Yeah. I, well, I animals they react. They can I don't know. They see things and hear things and sense things that we never will. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I suppose because they're so simple that way. They they don't have any idea if it was a ghost or whatever it might be whatever someone suspects they just they know there's something wrong they know they sense something and uh, yeah i'm always going to trust an animal's instincts before human always have yeah Uh oh we lost them again (laughs) we lost them again Uh oh i think that guy uh that you had that head i don't know marty (laughs) so well, and so what we were talking about a little bit, and I was kind of when they came back on, and then we had a similar deal with our our pets, and they look out the door, they don't see nothing, but yet they sit there, well, they wouldn't go outside, and then they just kind of go over and lay down for no reason, and it goes away. So I, like I said, going back on that whole thing, I'm not sure what they see, sense, or, or what they're hearing, but I'm always going to trust their instincts more than anything. I get to a few of these comments here. Uh, so Gene, he makes a, a good one here. He says, I don't know if you guys listen to Bill Burr, but he made a point. He says, why do ghosts hang out in basements and attics when they could be hanging out in the CIA or other secret, uh, super secret places? Just a thought. Great thought. Uh, I know where I'd hang out. I sure ain't going to be in an attic or a basement. I don't want to be down there anymore than I'd have to be or be in a dark, dreary place. Go and have some fun and see things that I didn't ever get to see before, probably. If I was going to be a spirit, he goes, and then of course, Gene, the comment, and that was to, to Marty talking about, he goes, yeah, he says, that's bad when your armed friend has hauled ass and left you standing there. I don't know if he's much of a friend anymore. What do you think, Marty or uh, Gene? I don't know. So Dave, he's got one here. He says, a friend of mine has an old house in downtown Mandan. It's known to be in an old burial area. His light would turn on and off randomly. Occasionally the toilet would randomly flush. He says, after after he's seen it once, he says, I never spent the night there again. And I, There's always going to be things, I think, that we just cannot ever probably explain. So I'll tell you what, we're going to take one more break here. We're going to see if we can get them online one more time. Then we're going to try to do a few. Uh, I think we'll try and do a little 2A bullet points. Maybe I do have a patriotic company of the week as well. So let's take a quick break. I will come back and... I will see if we can get these guys back online. Lauer Auto Repair. They're located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota, or give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can tackle any problem your vehicle is having, and when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with the Pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There's plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area, but why take the chance of patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake, Lauer Auto is your pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them you heard they're a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro Second Amendment, pro North Dakota, live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308, located at 309 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. All right, we got you guys back. Are we back on? Yeah, again. Again, see, we start <laughs> talking about that skull, and you guys are axed again. What yeah, the apparently there's some spirits involved. It's, it's <laughs> kind of fitting for right. tonight's show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's okay, it's I'll just run through the comments. The, the electricity well, went out again. But this blinks. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what Lynette says? She goes, how come we lose Marty when he wants to talk skulls? Freaky. <laughs> I think we need to a good point. find something else out. <laughs> I don't, and, you know, and I don't want to get raided tonight. I don't have any more. <laughs> good, 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 good. I mean, there may be a few tibias and a fibula or two, yeah. but. No, oh, I haven't that gone day. through the chipper shredder. <laughs> I have skulls here, but they're all of the deer and antelope kind and buffalo. And Well, we I have a new skull, though. You know, we did a little butchering over the weekend, so I have a new skull uh, around here, too. Uh, she dropped like a bad habit, so we were good. Meat's good. She bled out good. Oh, nice. We're going to be eating fine. <laughs> I think I sent you a picture, Marty. 
Yeah, I did get that. That is one good looking beef right there. That's going to be tasty. Oh, I think that's going to be real, real good. I see Jamie when you know when you guys said reinvite me again. Jamie's like, huh? <laughs> I like what your response was. Why keep saying? <laughs> <laughs> see, he should be tuned in because we're just making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed he hasn't responded either. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He's probably how many cores lights in. You know, but Clay, where can you have stories? You know, I mean, all the old hunting and all the old cowboy stories. Do they have any weird, strange, or really fascinating things that happen on the golf course? No. 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 They so, tip over a golf course because they had too many. <laughs> I, I think we're real lucky that we get to be involved in stuff like uh hunting and guns right, and exactly you know and oh shit so oh, no, no you're, oh, we got you're, it. you're still here well i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna play you something it's a little excerpt from you remember the ghost adventure show i don't know if it's still on but they made a visit to north dakota and then we'll talk just real briefly about the san haven state hospital man we need to make a trip up there guy oh yeah so i'm gonna play Wait, this where's, huh where is that at again it's uh, way up north somewhere Way up north by maybe Botno? Uh, Dunseth. Dunseth up in Rolette County. Dunseth. 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 All right. And uh, I guess yeah. when uh, basically they decided to sell this, the, the, it's now owned by the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. So might be interesting to make that trip. My son-in-law went up there and uh, with a group of guys. Yeah. and Ghost and, hunters? And, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they weren't ghost. They, but they they did go up there. Apparently, that's a big deal. I go hunting. They go looking for ghosts. Oh, really, Corey? He says, "Broke back <laughs> mountain." Now that is scary. I'll never watch. Yeah, it. that's. I've never seen weird. that movie. Uh, I'm proud to say. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's a> <laughs> Eric Newman. Jamie shoots a six five and drinks pumpkin spice. That just. I don't think we want to see him dance. <laughs> I know we're delayed now. Yeah, we're way behind. What's that? We're, we're delayed on big time. Really? Yeah, we're like no, I'll... scarily 30 seconds behind you. What the heck? See, here, your skull, uh, your skull guy, that, he's pissed. That skull. Yeah. That skull. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play this quick uh, clip and then we'll talk a little bit about it. <laughs> hey everybody, it's me, Zach. Uh, Dunseith, North Dakota. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Now we lost audio. Okay, it's fucked. cold. It's dark. Clouds are zipping by the moon yeah, like a Halloween movie. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. This is reality. The reality is, is that we're getting ready to investigate. You bring this back massive you monster bring back behind me. Talk this is the San Haven Sanatorium. Mountain, screwed up I right know. Here. What the fuck? Let me tell you something that happened here in 2001. There was a teenager here. This yeah, teenager was right. running from something. We don't even hear him anymore. No. This teenager then fell down an elevator shaft <sighs> 40 feet to his yeah, death. Man. We're getting closer. Are we? We're only like we, 20 uh, seconds. We just found the yeah. elevator shaft where this uh, teenager. I bet boy we can't hear him because uh, and no, we're getting himself. closer. Look. Yeah, in 2001, if you stand right closer. here, which I'm sure he did, I bet he's and you that slip, thing. or oh. if something pushes you, you're done. Oh, yeah. When it's you go inside now. these halls, yeah, look, every single footstep right on. you take, it's oh, harder it to like walk that? forward. That's how strong the energy is inside of this what building. What the fuck? You're on the radio all the time. <laughs> you like sanatoriums? You like abandoned buildings? You like infestations of spirits and even demons. He got in his car, closed his door, started it up, turned on his lights so they'd have more light. Uh, the devil was standing in front of this car. This sanatorium has it all. Watch us enter this building and see what this building has in store for us. Later, my butt really hurt. Now so someone said, hey, did you mute them, guys? I could hear them talking over the video. Yeah, I couldn't hear it, but hey, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, oh, that's so that's the San Haven State Hospital, and I'd heard about this 17-year-old. Well, evidently that guys. happened in October 13th, I guess. Yeah, we're just kind of fucked. <laughs> you can't hear me? 
Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I don't think we have them. I don't know what's going on. It's actually the timing has stopped too. Uh oh. Did you mention the skull? All right. Are we back now? Can you hear me now? That's weird that you mentioned the skull and everything shut down. Are you are you back? Even its effects. I might have to stay here tonight. I don't think he's back. I don't think your guys are back. You can't hear me, can you? Quit moving, you two. Deuce is on top of me. Hmm. I don't think they can hear me or see me, guys. Hello. Are you back? We All don't right. know what happened. I don't either. And we I could hear. It wasn't anything to do with Brokeback Mountain. No. <laughs> we were just going to stay in the van over here, though. I can down tell you guys. We were going to take it down by the river. We yeah. take down by a van down by the river. <laughs> I got two of them. Three of them, actually. So just so you know, we could hear everything you were saying. You couldn't hear us, evidently. Couldn't hear me. <laughs> Marty's <laughs> eyes get this big. <laughs> you know, we're just not going to mention that item. I'm not even going to say the word because it seems oh, like every time say we say that again. <laughs> even the comments, Corey, I can hear you guys. Everybody could yeah, so everyone could hear us. So anyway, like I said, we uh San Haven State Hospital. Uh that happened, I guess, in October. Uh it sounded like October 13, 2001, when that boy fell. And I mean, there's a just a ton when I was doing some research, tons of things and ghost hunters going there and, and a lot of activity when they were allowed in there. I don't know. Sounds like a pretty cool place. You said, Marty, you had what, your son-in-law or something went up there? Yeah, my son-in-law went up there with a group of guys. You know, I suppose they were driving around drinking beer. Well, let's drive to Dunseith and go to the... See what's going on, right? Mental hospital. I don't know, whatever, sanitarium or whatever it was. And one of the guys swears he saw... Now, they didn't go in it. Okay. But he swears he saw somebody in a window. You know, in this place, all the windows are broken down. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. And and uh, that kid's gone coon hunting with me, and, and he's told me the story. And he said whatever he saw petrified him, you know. So I, I don't know what this stuff is, Clay. I You know, uh, back to the weird lights in the sky that you guys experienced. Uh, I haven't. You'd think night after night after night that I would see more UFOs or strange lights. I've seen drones. I've seen strange helicopters. One night a drone came over. My wife and I and my youngest daughter were hunting. And a drone came over. And following that drone um, was uh, the only way I can explain it was a, a MASH helicopter. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep, you're good. Okay. Yeah, see, the video is way off. The video is way off, but anyway, it don't matter. Uh, 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 you know, you remember the show Mash? Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, it was a little helicopter like that. A bubble helicopter was <laughs> following this drone, and uh, I called the sheriff because I thought right away some there was an escaped convict or maybe a uh, mental patient was loose. And so I called the sheriff, and they said, "Nope, nobody's. Uh, there's no been reports, or nobody's escaped from anywhere." So I said, well, have a deputy call me. And they did, and a deputy called me. And I and this they were definitely working a grid pattern in the woods over, you know, mm-hmm. it was over the river bottoms. You know, I've been down there when the National Guard was doing their training and everything. Mm-hmm. This was nothing like it. It was about a a four by four drone followed mm-hmm. by this little helicopter. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, to this day, I still have no idea what that, there's no explanation. So um, huh. I, I do have a couple strange lights. You know, one time my daughters were with me and then boyfriend, now son-in-law, and we saw a light up in the sky and it was a long ways away. And it was making basically a square. It would, and it was as far away as the stars and it would go down about an inch and over about an inch and up an inch and it was making a square and everybody's seen it but you know as far as any ufos that's about all i got on that i i I, you think i'd have more but i don't i only got one instance of something like that and that was right here after i was shortly after danelle and i were married i was walking up to the barn to the and by the other house 
and I don't know what it was. I mean, they used to do a bunch of flying over. I know this was a bombing test run, you know, from the Air Force when they were doing that. And some of those were coming out of Ellsworth and out of Minot. So, you know, who knows what they were doing? But it was, it was like in a triangle. And that's no kidding. Had perfect triangle, just a long one with three lights. I just thought it was something going over the top. New, you know, plane, didn't know. And it stopped. And I looked up and I was like, okay, that's odd. And it just sat there and hovered. And all of a sudden, it literally did a 180 and then took off as fast as it could. And I never saw it again. I come in and told my wife, I think she thought I was half loopy and wondering who the hell she just married. But I'm telling you, that, that was probably the spookiest thing I've ever seen. What was it? I don't know. I mean, there was a lot of Air Force stuff at that time going over, you know, this area. This was their flyway. Was it a test craft? I don't know. But it was pretty cool and it was pretty neat and it was pretty spooky all at the same time. Well, the same thing happened to me. You talk about that burst of speed. Mm -hmm. uh, we were moving some cows down south of me, and my daughter and I were riding back, and it was broad daylight. And uh, we saw this strange shape in the sky. I would say it was cigar-shaped, you know, your basic UFO shape. <laughs> and both of us seen it, and, and it was slowly going it was through some trees, but it was way past the trees, probably about a quarter mile away. And uh, when we got out, it was hoovering over there about a quarter mile away. And all of a sudden it just went, whoosh. And I mean, that bugger was gone. gone. Yeah, that's how this was, just yep. boom. And it was gone and, and gone fast. I don't know. It was just weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, there's stuff out there that we can't explain, and I don't know what it is. Um, someday we'll find out. But, you know, I'm always intrigued with that stuff because, you know, at night when I'm out, I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, uh, I always think about stuff like that at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and as far as drones go, I've only been, I only had one encounter with a drone. Me and my buddy Vance were over in McIntosh, South Dakota. Actually, we just got done hunting. All of a sudden, we hear a zzzz, and I, what? and I look up. I mean, literally, just right above us, here's this, and it's a big drone. We're in the, so I went over to, you know, rather than, you know, go try to get it. No, I walked over to my pickup, grabbed my shotgun, and I pulled up on it. <laughs> it took off. Then we followed it. We found out it was just a revenue. It was the Corson County Sheriff's Office, and uh, they had no right to be over that airspace as far as we were concerned. So, and, uh, <laughs> revenue. They, but, <laughs> that's, that's what I call revenues. <laughs> victim always after victimless crime. But the thing is, I went and posted this on fa fascist book, and right away the Corson County Sheriff at that time he was, oh well, he said I talked to the deputies, they didn't do anything, they didn't, didn't even have their camera on. I said really, I said that's why when I pulled up and I was going to shoot it, I had no right to be, I didn't know who it was, and he basically said, oh no, they weren't doing anything, and I said, well that's why it took off so fast, huh? And then the uh, that deputy he chimed in and said. Well, if you'd have just stopped that, I showed it to you. Is that the point is you shouldn't have even been over the property. They don't get that. That's what I was pissed about. What were they doing over a person's private property that low? I had every intention of shooting it. <laughs> well, I, I did shoot at a drone over my place. Um, and I have that on film, not me shooting at it. You have that on film, you not shooting yeah. at it? I'll, I'll, no. <laughs> I have the drone. Oh, okay. I, I shot at the drone, and my, my daughter was over about a quarter mile on a pasture I was renting. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just shot at the drone. Get it on film. And she did. Good. And I'll send, no that, right. I'll send that to you. It's over an abandoned farmyard. And then I got in my pickup. She was on horseback. And I, and I drove a two-mile circle trying to figure out who was droning me. Because when I... When just like you said, when I pulled my pistol out, I had my 22 little Smith and Wesson 22 pistol, and yep. when I pulled that pistol out and aimed, I seen that thing move just enough where it knew, and it went poof. And I was like, you know, I I didn't have the right lead. Normally, I'd have shot that bugger right out of the air. I had very seldom miss. But I I was didn't have the right lead, and I shot at it, and I didn't hit it. Maybe good luck because I'd probably be in prison now. <laughs> And, and we have no idea who that was. Yeah, that's the thing with these drones. I, you know, if I see one out here, there's definitely a problem. I mean, it could come from town, more little bit of town of Morristown to the south of me. But 
now don't fly over my place i'll treat it as a trespass and uh, that's it's not going to survive <laughs> you know you needed wyatt's uh, choice of firearm a shotgun then you'd have got that i know one. there you go <laughs> side by side baby. perfect both barrels right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Corey merriman chimes in he says Drone's been flying over the concrete plant a lot. Josh is getting trigger happy. That's in Lemon, South Dakota. I guess a lot of drones have been flying over his concrete plant. And yeah, you know, I don't what? like it. I do not like the idea of drones coming over our place. I haven't seen a lot of them not right here at this place, except the one. And the guy is funny. He sent me a message. He says, don't shoot my drone. He says it's flying out to your place. <laughs> he knew I'd shoot it. Well, those drones. Clay have been used against us. I don't know if anybody has ever watched any shark videos, but shark is a big animal rights activist, and they and they have okay. used drones in rodeo, in feedlots, mm. in farming operation, in cockfighting operations. You know, all, all of these things. You know, um, you know, and you can have your own opinions on chicken fighting. I've been, uh, you know, I, I I fought chickens for years, and now these. Uh, these drones are being used to f break these operations up and they're, yeah. they're used in feedlots and, and, and uh, they're, you know, they're, they're basically being used on things that are, have been going on in America forever and to turn Americans on Americans. We're, we're getting oh, away. Uh, we're getting away from scary stuff. Yeah, we are. But <laughs> uh, you got any more call-ins? We need a good call-in, a good scary story. I, I don't have any more, honestly. Oh, I really God. don't. Uh, but I'll tell you Come what. On, I Eric. We're, we're Eric. Pretty, we're boring the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're maintaining pretty good numbers, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to show tell you this. So look at this. I got four pages. I, I just did a quick search of the most haunted places in North Dakota, and I found it interesting that this even existed. Uh, it's called, uh, let me look here, hauntedplaces.org. I'll put that up there. I'm going to check uh, it out. And, I mean, there is a ton of them on there. That. You can't <laughs> drink through that. <laughs> you got South Sandhaven Sanatorium, St. Joseph's Hospital in Dickinson, North Dakota. I seen Dan Brown was uh, chiming in. Maybe he knows a little bit more about that. But I, I didn't realize that the St. Joseph's Hospital is uh, supposedly a haunted place. Employees there, they report ghostly activity from different areas in the hospital. The elevator to the morgue runs up and down by itself. Moaning and voices are heard in the cafeteria. Call buttons are activated from empty rooms. I mean, really, it wouldn't be surprising all the things that happen in the hospital and the death that who knows uh, what's going on in there. But I thought that was you know interesting. The University of Jamestown, Trollwood Park in Fargo. White Lady Lane in Walhalla. Now I know where Walhalla is. I've been there. Maybe Marty don't know where that's at. You know I know Walhalla where Walhalla is. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you got the Lion House in Dickinson. I mean, I'm just kind of. It's funny how many of these, you know, Amadon, George's, and the Owl. Uh, a small boy has been seen running, playing, and bumping into people. Strange voices, music been playing and heard. And employees have come down in the morning to find. Several of the restaurants stock of potato chip bags open. So that's got to be kind of an old one because I'm pretty sure that isn't even open anymore. Uh, Newtown Railroad Tracks. There, when you get up there, you can go check out the Newtown Railroad Tracks. Yeah, it was full of snow this morning. I was there at 4.30 <laughs> this morning. There was, it was no activity, pleasure. huh? It said, rumor has it that those who walk along the railroad tracks at night may be followed by mysterious red lights. Huh. They're said to disappear once the walker reaches Main Street. Interesting, I thought. Fort Abraham Lincoln Custer House. I've heard about that one. I've, I've heard a lot of people say they hear some see and hear weird things there. I mean, I just I was going through this. I thought that's pretty kind of pretty cool, really. Um, Apple know, Creek Country Club. Hmm. Patrons and staff members have heard unexplained noises. Kitchen staff report that a ghost of a former chef has been seen there. <laughs> and according to those that have seen her, she tends to disappear quickly without appearing to take any notice of the living. Hey, you will have to go check that one out. That's near you, isn't it? Apple Creek Country Club. <laughs> uh oh, we lost you again. We lost them again, guys. You believe us? We start talking about the spooky things and ghosts, and boom. So Corey chimes in here and he says just... Legion and Lemon is supposed to have ghosts. I've heard that before, Corey. Um, and I I don't know. I mean, I was a kid when my grandpa was uh, managing that, so I don't really remember too much. Uh, I, you know, I just don't have any memories of that. But I've heard that about the Legion before. 
<laughs> cool. Dave, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we just lost power. I don't know. There's something weird going on. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought tonight. As soon as we start talking, that's a boom. We get next. Uh, this is awesome. burglars. Oh, so Dave, he's kind of chiming in there and he's talking. I'm sure about the drones. Says burglars use them to scope out houses. No foot footprints and rarely set off motion sensors. I think that's probably a very legitimate thing that's happening with uh, with drones. Oh, can you still hear me, Marty? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, yeah. All righty. Well, I'll tell you what, I am going to do one last uh, ad for our main sponsor, Lawler Auto Repair, and then we'll come back and we'll kind of wrap this up and do our patriotic company of the week. Don't fall asleep on me, though, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll do one quick ad and then we're going to wrap this baby up. Lauer Auto Repair. They're located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota, or give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can tackle any problem your vehicle is having, and when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with the Pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There's plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area, but why take the chance of patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake, Lauer Auto is your pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them you heard they're a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro Second Amendment, pro North Dakota, live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308, located at 309 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. All right, again, thanks to Lauer Auto Repair, 309 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. Hunting season's coming. Go get that, that pickup checked out. Get it ready for hunting season. 701-258-6308. So I guess I don't have any more stories that I'm going to, I guess, share. Not here tonight. Anyway, if you guys don't, I think we're going to move on to our patriotic company of the week. You guys got anything, guys? Uh oh, I think we lost our audio, it looks like to me. I think they're gone again. Anyway, so... With that, uh, I'll put out here, Eric uh, puts up a deal. He says, I had a military helicopter grid my place one time. They flew back and forth gridding the area for about a half hour. Had neighbors ask me what I did. You know, and, and we've had a few. I saw a Blackhawk go over here about a month ago. I don't know where they were headed. It was a straight line, but it was kind of cool listening to it. But it was, uh, it was just something you don't see every day. They didn't do anything but just keep flying through. So who knows what they were doing. But. So I'll tell you what, while they're trying to come back online here, I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do the patriotic company of the week that I did not do last week. So here we go, guys, with our patriotic company of the week. All right, welcome oh. back here. Oh, do we have audio now? <laughs> I we don't do. know. Okay, hold on a minute. We're just going to go into the patriotic company, and then we can uh, go back, guys. So here's what my patriotic company of the week is. I didn't do last week. a and Engraving out of Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, you guys can find them at 2302 East St. Andrew Street, Rapid City, South Dakota, and contact them at 1-800-243-4641. Or find them on the web at aaengraving.com. Now, the reason I chose these guys is I started working with them uh, basically when I started with the NRA. 
And I got to know Mark, who's the owner, and he's been in business, oh, my goodness, forever. Started in the 70s, I believe. And he actually, if you look at this picture on here in that upper corner, that's a hand-engraved gun that he did. And he used to do all his engraving by hand. Of course, now they've moved on. They're doing a lot of laser engraving. Mark uh, doesn't do a lot of hand engraving anymore unless it's for something special or a special occasion. But I'm telling you, these guys have done NRA guns for me. They've done NRA guns for the NRA. If you look in that magazine from the NRA, a lot of those commemorative firearms come from a and engraving. They've been real supportive. They were good sponsors of the Rapid City event. They came to the state event, and Mark and Tanya did a fantastic job. They've done my Farm Bureau guns and did all of the engraving on, on most of those guns that we've done. And I just I can't say enough about how patriotic they are. They support the Second Amendment. They're good conservatives. And, I, I mean, they are what every company should be when it comes to, to being in business, especially in the firearms industry. So they are my patriotic company of the week, a and Engraving, down there in Rapid City. And I highly recommend you go check them out. Again, a and Engraving, down in Rapid City, South Dakota, 800-243-4641. And you can find them on the web at aaengraving.com. And if you're having trouble, get a hold of me. Uh, just email me at guns at gunsinthe701.com. I can put you in touch with them. I have a long-standing relationship, over 20 years working with them guys. So, if you can, if you want a gun engraved, who's going to support us and support you? These are the guys. They're just like our other sponsors, Law Auto Repair and Blind Guy. You won't find better people than these particular businesses that we always are out here talking about. A and Engraving, Clay's patriotic company of the week so all right can you guys hear me now yeah we yeah, got yeah. you yeah, we got you back i think that's the spooky story of the of the night of the, is what's happening with us every time we start talking yeah. about it i i think the spookiest story of the night is wyatt's story of being my neighbor we <laughs> live what maybe a quarter mile away Mark, yeah yeah so that's the spookiest story of the night him being my neighbor for 20 some years <laughs> that's a spooky <laughs> yeah, i'll bet he's heard some strange noises coming well, i do call it things <laughs> explosions large of, booms and dogs and yeah a know, lot of explosions dogs women, women, screaming. women screaming women screaming women <laughs> screaming <laughs> i'll that's take credit for that. give credit where credit is due <laughs> but it's not the good screaming it's <laughs> Uh, like, uh, you know, that's in your eyes. But I never ran over there to check. <laughs> so, but, you know, the, the whole point he is, always has an excuse when I call. <laughs> my wife's always there. Your but wife's the always point there. Is, uh, you know, to share these experiences, you know, with with young kids that are coming up. Uh, you know, and I, I, you know, not that I like to take kids out and petrify them so they'll never hunt again. Right. I got a young kid that's hunting with me now, Wyatt Hornbacher, good young kid. And what I love about that kid is every time I pick him up, he's like, where are we going tonight? I mean, <laughs> he wants to go hunting. He wants to do stuff. And and I think that's what's lacking in our, our children. And, our uh, you know, there's so many kids that are content with sitting at home on computers listening to podcasts uh, on facebook right. when they should be out coon hunting yeah, you absolutely. know what i'm going coon hunting tonight why <laughs> After you're done here i'll be sleeping anybody want to go pheasant, coon hunting? i'm gonna be pheasant hunting tomorrow. nobody showed up to go coon hunting at lone tree i was in i was up on the canadian border last weekend now hunting and uh you know i had a lot of kids going coon hunting up there with me but Wyatt, I think we need to re-up this coon hunting thing. I need time. No, you need I time need a mule again. Do you need maybe time an to oxen, heal? something. <laughs> something that I can ride. Hey, take I'm... kids out hunting. I don't care if it's coon hunting, pheasant hunting, deer hunting, whatever it is. Arrowhead hunting, whatever. Rock hunting. Take them I'm kids out them. because if you don't build the memories, you're going to lose it. And take pictures. Because when you're dead and gone, your grandkids are going to have those pictures, great-grandkids, great-great-grandkids. If you don't have those pictures, they ain't going to remember who you are. Oh, absolutely. And I'm Like I always told everybody, even at, when I was doing banquets, what I always say, I said, I am 
the perfect example of take a kid hunting. My dad did not do a lot of hunting and fishing, did a little, but it wasn't enough to, you know, that would have had put that interest in, into, into me to do it. Um, in fact, it was Eric's dad, uh, Eric Newman, who listens here. He, he took me out uh, because I was good friends with Ryan, which is Eric's brother as well. And even though I maybe wasn't perfect and I didn't have a lot of the skills or, or even the safety uh, knowledge because I'd just never been exposed to it. He, he took me out. We, we started learning things, and that's why I like to shoot. That's why I like to hunt. Um, I, my boys, my well, you've probably seen the videos, guys, of yeah. my boys. They can shoot, uh, especially my youngest. He, he's better than I am with a pistol. So I, I'm proud of that. You know, he's been shooting pistol since he was little. He's uh, 14 years old now, and I'm telling you, that kid knows how to handle a pistol. And I, I think that's great. It, it's two things. Shows him responsibility. And he knows how to defend himself, and I'm I'm proud of that fact. So oh, we lost him again. I'm telling you, spooky Wednesday uh, stories are just killing these guys down there tonight. So, alrighty, well, I think uh, we're gonna probably uh, wrap this up tonight. I want to thank everybody. Are we back, guys? Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Yeah. I say I was just gonna remind everybody we have. We're gonna wrap this up. So I'm gonna let uh, you talk about this because I don't want to forget it. And there's a benefit coming up uh, from a pretty sweet lady, from what I understand, who's who's fighting a pretty tough battle. Let me bring up that. Uh, well, what happened to it now? There it is. All right. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. It's uh, a good friend of mine's wife. Um, yeah. Just kind of out of the blue happened. Okay. Um, and and uh, what's what's her name again? How do you pronounce that? Amy. What? Amy Lazinski. Amy Lozinski, okay. Yeah, and uh, it just she's it's not going great, but there's always hope. Um, right, having a benefit on Monday, uh, October thirtieth for her um, silent auction sp spaghetti supper. Um, if you can join or go fund me, whatever you can do, show support by sh being there. Whatever, um, great lady, it just. Just out of the blue. I mean, it was not. Yeah, um, yeah and it, it looks like she's got children and a real yes, nice family yes, there. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, those are actually her stepkids, but she's adopted them like her own. Awesome. You yep. know, and raised them for quite quite some time. Um, so um, it's just. Well, a, she, she was diagnosed, uh, according to this, with uh, what is it? Andiocarcinoma, basically lung cancer, correct? Yeah, pretty fast moving cancer, I guess. I okay. don't know exact details, um, but you know, it just obviously the big thing is anyone knows that goes to the hospital, insurance doesn't cover everything, right? And uh, so that's that there were. So, uh, what I'll do with this flyer is, is I'll get that up on our website so you guys can go to guns and a 701.com and we will have that on the website so you can see it the benefit it's a dinner and silent auction uh for amy lazinski Lezen taking yeah. place at the amvets uh for those of you that don't know where the amvets is it's 2402 railroad avenue bismarck north dakota 58501 uh if you're on main yeah uh, it's pretty easy to find just kind of look off to the south and you're going to see that big yeah, building. right by the big boy right by the big boy yep it's taking place. Yeah. It starts at what six o'clock p.m. Central Time, October thirtieth. That's this Monday, so it's coming up. They do have a GoFundMe, uh, and there's a QR code uh, QR code on here that you can scan, and just go ahead and scan that, and then you can they'll make it real easy. And it's to support her in her battle against cancer. So we we surely want to encourage all of you who are in that Bismarck area go out there and, and uh, support this great family and help her out. Like Wyatt was saying. Not everything's covered. You can have the best insurance in the world, and you're still going to see a 15%, 20% uh, probably oh, yeah. copay on it. They've racked up some big bills. And it so. don't take long when you're fighting cancer. No, um, no, no. So, so I deeply appreciate it. Anyone do whatever they can. Absolutely. So make sure you go October 30th, AMVET, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Go out there and do what yeah. you can. And I, I find things, when you see things like this, you really do learn that we are the most generous nation in the world when it comes to things like yeah. this. It just amazes me how much money can be can be raised and and the hearts that people yeah. have. So good to, glad to yeah, see this. Somebody, 
some of the silent auction stuff is these two uh, propane skulls. Right here, I got a close up of it. Look at there. Oh yeah. And uh, that will be Marty made those, didn't he? Stuff. I believe Marty yes. made those, so that's pretty cool. And crafted. Handcrafted, unique, one of a kind, it's made in the place. USA and North Dakota. You'll never get the same one again. <laughs> never. never, 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 ever. Play. Now, I've got to share one more scary story, and this, this will really put fear into you Oh, uh, before we go. Okay, uh, this weekend I was hunting up along the Canadian border, and we trailed the coon into an old hip roof barn, the old classic oh, yeah. barn. And, and the coon was up on the old, uh, the old pulley from the hay mound. Okay. So they were, I, I left my 22 mag that I usually use my rifle and, uh, they were shooting. Two guys were shooting at this raccoon in the top of the barn. One dog made it up there and I pulled out my usual carry Glock, uh, 43, in nine millimeter and and they were missing this raccoon now here's the scary part of this whole story i would shoot and then my pistol would not recock really and i would have a uh you know my there would be a new round in it but it would not fire and i would cock my pistol and uh, rack a new round and it would shoot and we shot the coon out killed it <laughs> And I thought, why is my gun malfunctioning? Mm -hmm. So I brought it home and cleaned it, and it would fire round per round per round per round. Really? But here's the, here's the scary thing. If I would have needed that gun in a situation to save my life or my family's life, it would have malfunctioned because I did not have it cleaned enough. <laughs> scary story. That is. And I learned that lesson well. I cleaned that. And now it's firing uh, perfectly. Well, clean it more. Uh, yeah, well, I, you know, that's a little hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, keep them barrels clean. Keep them actions clean. And because uh, you're going to need them sooner than you think. Absolutely. It's, it's, your, it's your first line of defense, honestly. That's just the way that is. So I tell you what, I'm going to put this up here quick like we ain't got a lot of time left here, but. We'll put it in hey, my ticker. Clay, one go. more thing. Anybody wants, if you got a lot of coon in your area, I'll drive just to hunt coon for fun. Ah. You want to get a bunch of kids lined up, call me, and I'll bring them darn old hounds. We might not tree any coon, but we'll have a good BS session, <laughs> and we'll have a good time with those kids. It might will, even it will be full of bees. Might even see some Bigfoot. Might even see some Bigfoot. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. I actually seen a few around here. Not not enough to go hunting, probably, but uh, that's actually Bigfoot okay. Or coon? Bi I'd be coon. Big coon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, you know what Dave says from uh, 1760 Sports? He says that's why you need a 1911, Marty. I've got one, and I'm going to start carrying that thing because this Glock was scary. I mean, it really let me down. You know, and it's weird. I, I've got a lot of Glocks, and not not my choice of firearm. I just I got to have them all, you know. So I, I get them, but I can tell you, I I've never had my Glocks fail me. I can say that. Yeah, I never have either, and this is the first time. I've got that uh, Rock River, uh, 1911, and I've shot thousands of rounds through that thing. That's never failed me, but it's a little bit bigger. I like this 43 because it's so narrow, and I build these little holsters for myself and they just go right on my belt Perfect. but they're not protected anyway and they get dusty and dirty and that's, yeah. that's a problem as with anything anyway, it needs to be happy halloween happy halloween Play. to everybody happy halloween to you guys all oh, you guys are having one heck of a time there tonight oh it's, a, it's <laughs> oh this ain't we're going hunting yet tonight let me tell you you're gonna see video on this. So, so i'm gonna just uh close with this a little bit guys uh, Jamie and I will be both on Friday on KFYR 550 AM with Mitchell in the morning, Todd Mitchell, the radio God joining us and, and hosting us. But we are now at a new time, 815 Central, 815 AM Central time, 715 Mountain. And so that's about 45 minutes. There's breaks in there. Hopefully we don't have a 17 minute break though, like we had this last Friday. But Jamie's going to be joining us. we got some great topics uh, lined up. I think he's even maybe going to mention his uh, little, I don't know if you heard, but 
he won a gun from Ruger, and it had to sell. It had to do with celebrating ten twenty two day here this past week. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that because they got some things going on. I'm gonna probably surprise them with a couple of subjects. And uh, so you want to tune in again, Mitchell in the morning, five fifty a.m. radio. That's every Friday at eight fifteen Central, seven fifteen Mountain. <laughs> So, don't forget to tune in on Friday morning. And Marty's still showing us his best side there. Yeah, <laughs> his mace goggles on. Yeah. And again, don't forget Amy Lazansky's benefit, October 30th, 2023, yeah. 6 p.m. Central Time, Am Vets Club, right there in Bismarck, North Dakota. If you want to go to the GoFundMe, of course, I can't stand that particular site, but it's GoFundMe.com. Uh, Amy's battle against lung cancer. Just go ahead and you search that. And I've got that uh, website up here. So if you want to see it again, just replay this and it's going to be sit there at the end of yeah, the Better you know, just so go to the AMBATS and do it. Just go in person. It's a lot of fun. You can help out and, and meet a lot of people. You probably yeah. know there and have a lot of fun. There'll be no, someone. Ad, yeah, no administrative fees. Uh, and I'm going to talk to Jamie. I don't know what we got for merchandise on hand, but I'm going to see if we can't put something together for you guys. Oh, absolutely. I'll just have him get in touch with anything you, Wyatt. And... Anything will help. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, again, I want to anything else you want to add, guys? Uh, Dave, I prefer my Smith & Wesson 38 <laughs> special. There ain't no better than that. <laughs> got one of them, too. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, with that, we will be back again next Wednesday, 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain, 7 o'clock Central. We should have our little uh, slap on the hands lifted by then from uh, Commie Tube, and we'll be back live on there. And, of course, again, don't forget, every Friday morning, 8.15 Central, 7.15 Mountain, Mitchell in the morning on KFYR, 5.50 a.m. Guys, with that, again, thank you. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, too bad Jamie couldn't join in the fun, but... Uh, who knows? He, he, like I said, he's probably dancing he on a bar naked. Down. Yeah, he's too busy singing. <laughs> too busy singing. All right. All right. With that, guys, keep your powder dry. We'll see everybody Friday morning and again next week. Take care. Yeah, see you.